All right. Welcome to the latest Sachem Conversation. I'm Chris Vaccaro, joined by Trent Crossan, proud Sachem alum, quarterback, safety, linebacker, basically every position possible during those championship games, and versatile player, and excited to chat with you about this, you know, 10 years later moment. Yeah, likewise. Uh, appreciate you uh, inviting me on. Uh, crazy, it's 10 years already, so. Yeah, it goes by fast. Uh, you know, honestly, in the history of Sachem football, there's arguably no greater season. And I'm sure the the folks from 77 or 86 would scoff at that. But the, the Long Island Championship is something special. And, and it only did come about around 1990. So those things did not exist in the, in the um, earlier eras. But for the modern era, the 2013 season, incredible. And it was one of those it took forever to get there. It felt like it took a century because of the teams before, because of losing to William Floyd for those four years in a row in the playoffs, because of different injuries and different people that were just incredible athletes like your brother going through the program, Dalton, having arguably the greatest talent in the modern era and not being able to win with him or Jesse Scanna or Malik Pierre in his earlier years, even though he obviously won with you as a senior so many great names went through, but this team did it. This team had the formula. And as many of us would say, I don't think you could have won without those teams not being able to get to that level. So talk about, you know, what does it feel like all these years later to reminisce about such a special time? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, my mind first starts, um, you said, and just the foundation that those teams with Jesse Scanna and, and Mike Andriasi, um, those teams were loaded with talent. Uh, I think that uh, freshman year season I had with, with those guys must have been one of the most talented teams on Long Island. I think we got to like, we were top five in the, the tri-state poll and we were just blowing out teams. Um, and then it didn't, didn't come together at the end. Uh, and I think you see it a lot in, in all levels of sports, um, but you really got to learn how to win those big games. Uh, and obviously we had three years of, of losing to Floyd um, and then we get to our senior year, the, the class of 2014, and we were just stacked from a talent standpoint, um, but also really had that team aspect. Uh, you know, you think of, of how loaded that team was with Malik Pierre, Anthony Ross, Kevin Bergaglia in the backfield, um, Anthony Service playing quarterback, uh, Demo, uh, you know, on the line, Nick Accurso. Um, it just goes on and on, and we were deep too. Um, where if we had some of those injuries where in the past, maybe we didn't have someone to step in, you know, on, on day one and fill those shoes, you know, we were really deep. Um, I was hurt some of that season and Anthony service was, was probably argue, arguably a better quarterback than I was coming in there. So it was, uh, you know, just pretty cool and not a lot of egos on the team and just really the, the perfect combination um, of players to, to make it happen that year. Do you do you think about um, the history that was made? Do you reflect? Is, is it tough to reflect? I mean, you lived it. You're the cause of it in many ways with some of the big plays that we're going to talk about. But can you reflect on being the only Sachem football team to win a Long Island championship? We hope it's not the last, obviously. But to this day, that's a really, really uh, you know, incredible precipice, incredible hurdle that your team was able to overcome. And honestly, obviously – if for people counting, Sachem has only been to two Long Island championships. They lost in 1995 to Lawrence from Nassau County, and then we beat Farmingdale in uh, in 2013. But from a historical perspective, are you able to put that, you know, frame that and see, you know, wow, we really did something that no other team has ever done? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as some of the memories pop up on social media now, they have the, you know, 10 years ago today or whatever it was from different games. Well, send it in our group chat and it's just, you know, we're one of one right now. And that's kind of the thing we said back then. And we still say it to today. It's just, you know, we're one of one in the, a pretty long history of, of high school football programs. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and definitely bonds us all together and, and we're still in touch with the guys and stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's funny. You, you reference those weekly posts. I obviously I post those weekly photo galleries. Those are all the photos that I took at every game 10 years ago. And I, I'm grateful that I had my camera and my phone out at every single moment to capture it. Even the games that we lose, even the seasons that we've been down, I'm there. I'm chronicling it all. But looking back, you know, I, I was saying to you before we started chatting just now, I haven't even looked at this stuff in 10 years, and it's really fun to relive it. 
on on yourself on your personal journey. I mean, we're obviously going to talk about the team and the big games and moments. I mean, do you even realize nobody has played more Sachem football games than you? You have played fifty games as a varsity football player. Nobody in the history of football at Sachem has done that. Um, obviously, your game as a junior against Bayshore, eight rushing touchdowns in the game, highest scoring game in Sachem history, records across the board. You had 26 total touchdowns, 24 of them on the ground, 1,600 rushing yards. You're fifth all time with 8.3 yards per carry on the ground, obviously. You had 96 total tackles. You were the team MVP, all division, all county, all Long Island, all state as a senior. Just really, you know, a storybook ending when you add a championship to that. But you had a hell of a four-year run that wasn't easy. That was totally difficult with the injuries, not just one, not just one area of your body, several injuries. You had one of those, ah, oh, we feel bad for Trent careers, but you know what? You don't think about that because you think about the championship, which is the beautiful part. So can you talk about all you endured? You know, yes, a lot of big plays and moments, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. I think, you know, it's funny looking back, uh, being older now, um, in the moment, you know, football is everything. And, as you get older, you learn there's there's more aspects of life, but it was hard. Uh, it was definitely hard then. Um, I think football in general, you know, it's not unique to me. Um, there was, you know, a lot of injuries and and ups and downs and disappointment. Uh, but overall, football it, it is it has to be the best sport out there just to prepare kids for the future and life. Um, so I think those struggles are all part of football and everyone went through their own struggles out there, uh, whether it was injury or getting through, you know, camp up in, in Fishkill um, or, you know, maybe not getting the starting position or, or whatever it was, you learn to overcome that in football uh, and it's the ultimate team sport. So just going through that stuff, I think really helped set me up for the next phase of life, going to college, uh, getting to play college football. I, I kind of laugh. I really didn't have any serious injuries in college. So <laughs> Figured I, I got them all out of the way in high school. Um, but, you know, it's just it's uncomparable to anything else you could do at that age uh, and just going through those adversary uh, adversary and coming back and, you know, succeeding and then ending with the, a Long Island championship. The first in school history is just, you know, it's a it's a storybook ending that I'll, I'll never forget. So talk about leading up to the Suffolk County championship. Obviously, it's a great regular season, but Floyd is always a target. And vice versa, Floyd is uh, expecting to play Sachem. Um, you go into it. Obviously, there's this nerve wracking. Can can we can we finally do this? Can we get over this hurdle? What are you guys thinking? What are you feeling? And then we'll talk about the game. Yeah, I think you know a funny story that comes to mind. Um, I think it was after we lost to Comac. I think we lost two games in a row that year. Uh, one to Floyd in the regular season, and then to Comac. Um, and this is just a, a story about how unique our team was. Uh, but I remember we had a, a lift after the game, after we lost to Comac, I think it was a Friday night game or whatever it was, but we had a lift then, then film and we we're in the elevator from the basement going up to the film room and uh, coach Caputo came in and kind of stopped the elevator door and he was all panicked and like, oh, is the team okay? We lost two games in a row, uh, all panicked. And we just almost were like laughing at each other because we were so confident in our team and ourselves. I you know, Malik was in there and Anthony Ross and service. And we were just looking at each other like, coach, you're the only one worrying right now. Like, you know, we got this. We're good. We're going to come back. And I don't think there was ever a doubt. And we could get into a little bit uh, when we start talking about the game. But I, I think there was a, a big play right in the beginning of that game that that Farmingdale had. And it was the same thing. It was just we knew that that this was our year and we were just so confident in each other um, that you know, I, I don't think it was as stressful as, it, you know, it might have seemed leading up to that game with, with Floyd um, just because of, of the way our team dynamic was. Yeah, and again, it wasn't just, all right, a couple losses in the regular season. It was several years of feeling, uh, all right, we want to get past this. We're good. We, we have the – really, it's, any championship team has depth, but there's mental depth and these, these filing cabinets of experiences that – you don't want to endure again, but you could say, well, we know how to get through that. It's okay if you go down early, except in this game against William Floyd, from the get-go, it was nonstop Sachem. It was finally, you know, I'm sitting there as I always am taking stats, taking pictures and video, relieved 
right away within the first quarter. I'm like, okay, this is great. I don't have to str- – I'm not going to be upset. The season's not going to end today. Uh, you know, how great was it to get up and continue to hold that lead and just kind of – I hate to say coast, but it was unlike any game we've ever had against Floyd. Yeah, you know, it was awesome. Um, I think we were locked in on that game and and ready. You know, we knew what the end goal of the season was. So um, it, it was just another step to get there, to, to get that Long Island championship. Yeah, and, and at one point, you know, you guys are up 21 nothing. You had eight carries for 70 yards. You had a 44-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. Um, Malik threw uh, a touchdown pass to Mike Licata on an option, and, you know, it was – the great, the great play calling. Forget. All right, I guess I'm not going to say forget the defense because you're shutting out Floyd. So Caputo and his defensive fronts and schemes were as good as they've ever been. You know, Dave Caputo, you know, the former defensive coordinator, now obviously current head football coach at Sachem. Uh, but the offense, the play calling was beautiful. It, it just it stifled them, um, and you're a part of that on the offensive side for sure. Yeah, we just had so many weapons that also had so much game experience. When you think about it, you know, Malik played uh if it wasn't at the end of freshman year it was starting sophomore year anthony ross same thing kevin bergaglia when he came up like we just had so many playmakers um that could really do it all yeah and you had you know you had um, ankle sprains torn ankle ligaments you were banged up two or three times that season but healthy enough to score touchdowns and make a significant contribution on both sides of the ball um, you know, are you playing hurt at that point in the year? Do you feel the pain? How are you kind of enduring physically through all of that? I think just when it's senior year, there's, you know, there's nothing you're holding back for. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there was some pain and stuff, but nothing that was going to stop me from doing anything I could out there. So, um, definitely pain and, and whatnot, but it wasn't, uh, anything obviously that, that was stopping me from, from getting out there. Yeah, so 28-7 final, beat Floyd, monkey off the back, hurdle crossed uh, at Stony Brook, so right in our own backyard, just a monumental, honestly surreal feeling having been there and lived it. I'm almost still in disbelief that it happened. It's one of those, like, I can't believe that was such a magical run, let alone that game, but the whole season. So now it's on to the Long Island Championship. Um, conference one against Farmingdale, one of those blue collar, also historic and legendary teams. They've definitely been there before. Buddy Krumenacker is a legendary coach, been around in Nassau County for over 30, 40 years. Uh, at Stony Brook helps, quicker bus ride. You know, you don't have, you don't have to venture into Hofstra to play it in, in Nassau. Uh, what are you feeling? What are you thinking after the, you know, getting the first championship out of the way, but now focusing on the big one? Again, I think just confidence, Um, you know, as that whole season went on, we got stronger as a team um, and, you know, made our own kind of team identity. And it was really baked in each other and relying on each other and knowing everyone was going to do their job. So, you know, we were we were disciplined. We had experienced some adversity, um, losing two games already in the season, uh, coming off a, a good win, beating Floyd for the first time that season and first time in the playoffs since all of us were around. Um, so I think it was just building on momentum. Uh, I remember having good weeks of practices right around Thanksgiving time. So, you know, I don't, I don't even know if school was going on, um, but just having, you know, good practices and just really ready to go and excited to play loose and, and play fast. So this game starts off much different. You know, you Sachem takes a 21 to seven, beating you just didn't get the cylinders going you get you start to get a little nervous or you know from a spectator perspective we are um what are you what are you thinking mentally at that point going down at least two scores just trusting the process trusting our team trusting our playmakers um farmingdale was a, a good team too i i think they had a kid that played in the nfl for a bit the receiver that i don't remember if it was a pickoff or a punt return or something he had early um, but I'm pretty sure he played in the NFL for a bit and they had their running back. Uh, I think it was Curtis Jenkins, a really good player. And they were loaded too. Um, so we knew they were going to come out and make plays and we had to limit those plays, but we knew we were going to get our plays too. Um, so again, like just can't overemphasize how confident our team was just in our ability and, and our process to, to get the win. So is it really you know, neck and neck first half, because you go into halftime, just trailing 21, 17. So you were able to tack on another 10 points. 
get it closer, only down by four. You have a full second half to play. And that's the most nail biting, strenuous two quarters for all of us. And you happen to score that touchdown that puts us over, that gives us what would be the eventual game winning touchdown. Um, and I'll play it. There, there's my candid relief at the end. Uh, what's the play call? Was it expected to break through and, and rush for as far as you did there? Was that supposed to be something shorter? I, I think it was like just a straight lead play. We were in shotgun. Uh, I remember just the watching the film at the end of the game, and I think it was to Demo's side, Anthony DiMatteo's side, and just collapsed the hole, and it was wide open, one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Um, but yeah, just get chills watching it, and you could just see the team in general and how pumped everyone is. Obviously, it's you know it's the Long Island Championship, so everyone was invested. Um, but yeah, just just get chills watching it. Uh, yeah, and in the game, Dylan Rodriguez goes down, Anthony Ross goes down. I think you're you're starting as a safety, defensive back. By the end of the game, you and Malik are middle linebackers, and just just next man up mentality. Step up and play wherever you can. Um, not easy to start losing personnel in such a critical time. Uh, how how difficult, if if not at all, is it to start playing different defensive positions in the middle of the most critical game? I think that adds to two things. The depth as we had, I mean, I started uh, when I got to say Jim playing outside linebacker. So, you know, moving from corner or safety to outside backer was nothing because we ran, you know, we ran that defense. Uh, the other thing, got to shout out Coach Caputo, uh, you know, just being, he's got to be one of the the best, most sophisticated high school football coaches around, um, just setting you up for success when you got onto the next level. We had a lot of kids on that team go on to play college football too, and everyone had really great careers. Um, so he just did a great job getting us ready uh, and making sure everyone knew, you know, the assignments of different positions that they could have played. And you had 15 carries for 63 yards and the two touchdowns. Uh, Brian Morris kicked the 37 yard field goal. That was a career high. And he was prolific because of all the touchdowns that were scored between extra points and all the uh, field goals that he converted. That was arguably and definitely the biggest in his career. Yeah. Malik was amazing. As you said, Mike Licata stepping up, service stepping up. Um, just, I hate to use a generic team effort, but there's no greater team effort than Sachem has ever had. Yeah, it's hundred percent right. I mean, we had all the talent that any of those other teams had, but you couldn't, you know, point to one person getting all the carries or, or doing anything like that. So it was, you know, a loaded team that just blended in as, as this really strong, perfect team. And so this is the 10 year anniversary. Sachem is celebrating, with an anniversary celebration during the Friday night game against Ward Melville in week four. Hopefully most of the guys will be down and celebrate and be recognized during halftime. How, I'm sure you've talked to many of them and stay in touch with many of them, but how excited is the group going into this weekend? Everyone's really excited. Uh, you know, we haven't been back as a group since then. Um, it, it was crazy when we got the text that was like, Hey, we're doing this you know, on the, on the week of Ward Melville to honor the 10 year anniversary, everyone's like, Oh my God, it's been 10 years already since that game. Uh, Cause it, it really does just feel like yesterday. And it's funny, everyone comes in and talks at halftime, all the alumni just about how quick it goes and everything. And you never believe it when you're, you're playing, but you know, we're, we're at that stage now and it does feel like it was just yesterday. We were with all those guys and our best friends out there playing and, and doing something that's never been done. So everyone's really excited to get back uh, and see each other. And it's tough to mention everybody in detail and go into everyone's contributions, but I do want to single out Malik Pierre because he did graduate as also one of the best running backs. He had, he had the most yards per carry. He averaged 11 yards per carry every time he touched the ball and he came up clutch and he was, you know, one of those multi-purpose players that were smart and physical and cared. Can you talk about him as a teammate and what he meant to this team? 
Yeah, I mean, Malik is the best teammate, one of the best friends you know I've ever had. Um, would do anything for anyone at at any time, uh, and he went on and did the same thing out at post. You know, had an incredible college career. I, I'm sure I don't know what accolades he had there, but I know he had a lot. Um, so he was just you know a real gamer, and and every time he got on that field, you know he's he's the best player on the field. So um, just dynamic and and also great head on his shoulders with, you know, never a me guy, always, you know, what he could do for the team. And, and obviously when he got the ball, he made things happen. So uh, he's a guy you want, want in the backfield um, and definitely agree with, with everything you said there. Um, and catch us up to speed on you. So you, you obviously graduate from Sachem, you go to Lafayette, you play college football. Uh, how was that experience? It was awesome. Um, you know, it's a lot different. Uh, you're not playing with, you know, your best friends, you know, for your town as much. You are playing for school, obviously. I still think there's nothing like high school football. I think a lot of people agree with that. Um, but college just takes it to the next level uh, of commitment, uh, of studying film. Um, pretty cool getting to play in some cool atmospheres. Got to play at, at West Point twice at Mikey Stadium, um, which was, a you know, a dream of mine. Um, and just some some really good players at that level. Um, so it, it was a great experience, uh, very different than high school, but same thing, just, you know, football in general does a great job preparing you for whatever that next step is. So appreciate every moment of it. Uh, all the people I've interacted with, all the coaches I've had, I, I really think more for me into kind of who I am today. Yeah, and, and the uh, Lehigh Lafayette rivalry is the oldest in college football, and it's, it's pretty special to be a part of. Can you describe that? I mean, that's may not be Sachin William Floyd, but it's very cool uh, to be a part of that. Yeah, it is. It's 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 got to be close to 160 this year. Um, so it is the oldest played uh, football game. Um, it's cool. I mean, you know, we were at the FCS or one AA level, so not all games are big time atmospheres, but it was awesome to know every year we were going to have that one kind of big time college football game uh, atmosphere. So it's pretty cool, pretty intense rivalry. Um, a lot of people really, really cared about it um, from an alumni standpoint. So people come back every year for the last you know 50 years of, of alumni uh, and just get the schools involved. It, it was awesome. And you mentioned playing at West Point. You, you also have a, you know, major affinity for the military. You're a leader. You went through the process through the ROTC program talk about how you're serving our country. Yeah, I'm still in the uh, the reserves now. I'm uh, just got kind of promoted to a company commander. Um, so we're uh, an HR unit here um, outside of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. So all good stuff. Um, just similar there, you know, you get great experience there, great leadership lessons. Uh, and just something that I was drawn to, you know, from high school, tried to get into West Point uh, to play football there. It didn't work out. So kind of the next step was if I was able to do football in RTC at, at Lafayette. Um, so that's how I got down that route and uh, have really liked and appreciated all the experiences that that's that's given me also. Awesome. Well, thanks for the service. And, uh, you know, you're making us proud on multiple fronts. Looking forward to seeing you this weekend for the anniversary game. Any any parting words, any last words of a rememberment of such a special time in your life? No, I think, you know, what I would just say is everyone's following what the Sachem community is doing and appreciating it. Even if, you know, we're not getting back to everything. We see everything you're doing, Chris, uh, everything coach Caputo is doing. And it's, it's really incredible. Um, and it just gives us so much comfort and, in, in what the Sachem community looks like going forward. Uh, you know, just in general football faces some challenges at the high school level um, and there's no doubt in anyone's mind that with you guys kind of leading the way and coach Caputo leading the way that there's only great things to come from here. So it's really exciting, uh, just to be an alumni, um, and, you know, be able to come home for events like this and, and do conversations like this with you. So really appreciate all the stuff that the entire community is doing, um, behind the school and the football program in particular. Yeah, means a lot. We appreciate where we're from. We want to make sure that the next generation feels that same way. So it's um, it's a privilege of mine to make sure I can string the gap between generations so that we don't lose sight of who we are. That uh, when it says tradition of excellence on the wall in the weight room, or when you walk into that lobby and you see those trophies and those pictures, that it really does inspire the next generation, that it really matters where you are. 
when you step foot in that building, it's something bigger than yourself. And I, and I hope to make that a reality for all kids, coaches, teachers and community members for for generations to come so appreciate you saying that appreciate you being a part of our history um and you suiting up more than anybody in the history of our program which is pretty cool outside of just being a champion quarterback uh you know at the highest level for us so thanks for the time and um go arrows yep thanks chris